Welcome, everybody. It's time for another wild ride. It's time to grab your board and catch a wave as we try and pick up the latest and greatest waves in sales pipeline with Matt Hines. Hey, Matt. Hey, Paul. How are we doing? I'm good. Always thrilled to have you here and not a substitute host. Not that your other substitutes <laughs> don't do a great job, but we want to we want to talk to the man himself here. We have world class substitutes here. <laughs> you do. So yeah, that's pretty good. Radio. One. I had a friend of mine once. He had an idea. He wanted to start a radio show or start a podcast, and he wanted to call it the Michael Jordan Show. And his whole idea was he start every show. Welcome to the Michael Jordan Show. Michael couldn't make it today, so uh, today is your guest host. <laughs> what a great um, idea! Yeah. Yeah, I know. I was decided not to do that. I think we'd probably get sued. Yeah. Yeah. So excited to be here, uh, boy! It has been a crazy busy uh, beginning of spring. I've uh, been really excited to continue to uh, to host. Uh, our weekly sales pipeline radio. You will always find us at 1130 Pacific, 230 Eastern every Thursday uh, on sales lead management uh, radio. Uh, you can also find us at salespipelineradio.com. You can find all of our past episodes as well as be up to, updated whenever we post a future episode at Google Play and the iTunes Store. And every week we are featuring some of the best and brightest minds in B2B sales and marketing looking for what's new, what's different, things that can make you more successful as you build and manage your own pipelines of business and very excited today to be featuring a friend and someone i've gotten to know over the last couple of years uh the cmo of event farm alexandra gibson and alexander we're going to get into some things um not only related to event marketing but also some things in your in your bio which is very well written and shares just a lot of interesting things about you both professionally and personally but uh alexander thanks so much for joining us on sales pipeline radio here today oh my gosh thank you so much for for having me very oh, of course. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, Alexandra, uh, so it, it, I always go to the bottom of people's bios, right? Because I figure it was what is it, you, everybody's always going to talk about what they've done in their in their careers and how much money they've made for their companies, and and you've got a lot of that good stuff. You also you talk at the bottom. You say you are a live music junkie and an avid skier. Talk a little bit about your first your first concert. You were in eighth grade. Uh, it was it was at a hockey rink in Wyoming. Talk a little about that first concert. Yes. So I actually, I grew up in Sun Valley, Idaho, not the worst place to grow up. For those of you who aren't familiar, it's a, it's a ski town that our school actually went on a, uh, we had a field trip that was a couple of days around Yellowstone National Park. And as kind of a surprise, we got to go to Dave Matthews Band was opening for Big Head Todd um, in Jackson Hole. I have no idea how many people it was, but very small venue, obviously a hockey rink uh, that was covered with with plywood and that was my first concert experience in eighth grade when under the table and dreaming had just come out so i feel like that started me off on on the path and and it's kind of funny that uh fast forward you know many years from then i actually when i was living in charlottesville virginia our office when i was running my digital marketing agency was in the uh, pink warehouse and that was the first place that dave matthews ever played a concert and there's a song called Warehouse uh, that mm-hmm. he wrote about that place. So I feel like it started, you know, somehow Dave Matthews has uh, has been an integral thread in my life. You and a lot of people, I think he's uh, his music and just his longevity has, has made a big impression. He's, you know, he married a, a gal who's from up here in the Seattle area. And uh, every, I don't know if this is why, but every Labor Day weekend, he does a three, three night uh, stint out at the Gorge, which is sort of central Washington, just this beautiful, beautiful outdoor venue uh and he recorded one of his albums at bastier university which is uh literally just about you know five minutes from my house in uh outside of kirkland washington so i think you know we could we could probably spend the next 35 minutes just talking about dave matthews (laughs) and the fact that i think there are two things there are probably many things that are better live than anything else but uh, two of them are hockey and, li- and music. I think music live yeah. is, is just amazing. Yeah. But anyway, we should probably talk a little bit about event marketing. Uh, Alexandra is joining us here on Sales Pipeline Radio today. She is the CMO of Event Farm, and Event Farm helps companies utilize events uh, in their B2B marketing strategies uh, to sort of better drive attributed revenue from those events. And that's really been a challenge, I think, in the past. I think sometimes, Alexandra, we've seen you know events can kind of be grouped in with PR as we think they work, we think they're valuable, but it's really hard sometimes to measure the value and return on on events. Talk a little bit about that challenge and how Event Farm is sort of approaching that. Yeah, I mean, that that really has been a challenge. And even kind of the best in class companies that we see that are really, really good at digital attribution still have struggled with kind of that offline attribution. And we all have that, that gut feeling of, okay, I know that this event went well. You know, I know we got things out of it. That's not easy to show on a board report or to uh, try and 
tell your CFO, especially the fact that events are often extremely expensive. That might be your, your largest line item, your budget. So what Event Farm is doing is we've created a software that then helps, you know, it does logistics as far as the invitation, registration, check-in. That part, kind of like marketing automation, um, has the landing pages and and the workflows and the email marketing component. But those pieces is what helps gather the data and then feeds it back in, speaks with your CRM and your marketing automation so that it becomes a point in time instead of uh, an event kind of living off on an island, it becomes a, you know, a timestamp, if you will, that shows up right there where, you know, someone attended a webinar, downloaded a, a white paper, spoke with an SDR, whatever the case may be. So well, let's take a quick step back and I'll ask, I guess, the devil's advocate question, which is, you know, do events still matter? I think we're seeing more and more opportunity across digital channels. We're seeing with marketing automation and predictive intelligence tools, just the increased complexity uh, and personalization of online marketing and digital channels. Uh, you know, in that increasingly digital world, uh, I'm asking this, you know, sort of devil's advocate, but also sort of setting you up maybe a little bit. Say, do events still matter? Like, what are the ben- What's the benefit of still getting out and getting in front of people? in more of a planned environment like that? So a couple fold. I'll, I'll start with saying that I came to Event Farm as a CMO uh, coming up on two years ago. And before that, I had been completely a digital marketer. Um, that was kind of what I hung my hat on. And I have to say, in some ways, I sort of saw things like direct mail or events as very expensive things that you couldn't easily measure. And I asked that question you know, why is this part of our budget? Why don't we just do something uh, digitally? So I had to do a little bit of soul searching and I had that, you know, I knew there was something there. And if this business was going to be um, figuring out what that something was and quantifying it, I knew I wanted to be a part of that. Um, and so fast forward to 2016, um, of the entire year, actually, one of our at Event Farm, uh, you know, kind of drinking our own, I guess, say, drinking our own champagne. I'm not a big Kool Aid person, <laughs> but uh, we had a road show across six different uh, cities. And when we looked at all of our campaigns, still to this day, as far as what was most successful, digital, um, mail, anything, uh, as far as our closed one and also our pipeline created, it was that road show. Um, so at the time I was running the report, which was in February, I need to, to update the numbers. We were already at an 8x ROI, and we still had a potential um, ROI of about 14x. That's amazing. So that's yeah, I think it's it's uh, it's interesting to see companies in a, in a drive to create, I guess, greater efficiency, uh, sort of forego some of the events. And it's not just you know going to an existing third party event and doing a booth, but also sort of doing your own road show. Uh, you know, I've I've heard multiple times from you know uh, senior sort of uh, sort of enterprise reps at Salesforce, you know, trying to get in front of senior IT decision makers. You know, when you ask them what's the best marketing channel you have, forget events, just what's the best marketing channel you have, and they say dinners. You know, which is another. Type of an event. I mean, you get people in a room and have a good conversation. That's something that can, that can be built on. And it's not just the impact of that event itself, but the follow-up, right? You know, I've heard companies that will do exactly. great events that are super well received at conferences. And the follow-up is through a BDR team or a demand gen team that says, hey, can we grab, you know, 15, 20 minutes to share more of what we're doing? The answer is almost always yes, you know, because you've yeah. given something of value to people. And they figure the least I can do is give you a little bit of time. And if, and if your message is correct, in that in that conversation, if you if you connect the dots and provide value, then you're in an active conversation and you're off to the races. So even though you know sometimes events people look at events and say, well, it's more involved or it's more expensive. Well, more expensive than what and to what purpose? And the ROI we're seeing from people that are leaning back into doing events is pretty significant. Yeah, and I think you hit the nail on the head too with the the follow up piece. So that's also been an interesting thing to see, especially in larger organizations, how the event team will often not be under the marketing umbrella. They're kind of off on their own. And it's more of a logistics, you know, it's a, a lot of moving pieces, but it's it's not uh, pulled under kind of a VP of marketing or a CMO. That to me is such a, a huge disconnect because how are you going to do all of the follow-up? How are you going to make sure that that event has legs well beyond and I think that's where a lot of companies are missing the mark is, oh, good, the event happened. 
<laughs> than nothing. Or then there's a message that is just really kind of off. It's tone deaf based mm-hmm. on that engagement and um, kind of that rapport that someone has built with you. Yeah, I think gone are the days of, you know, where hopefully random acts of marketing are seen and done and, and, and thought of as sort of being enough. And I think, you know, even companies that will say, well, we've got a robust event strategy. It doesn't involve other campaigns. It doesn't coordinate with other efforts. You know, I think about a good event. It's not a, it's not isolated in and of itself. What are you doing before the event to drive momentum, attention and interest? What are you doing at the event to fully leverage everything that exists around it? And as we've talked about here a little bit, you know, what are you doing in the follow up? How, how are you engaging with those prospects for a variety of channels, not just with your sales team, not just with your digital exactly. efforts, and not just in the days or week after the event, but long term, so that the event itself may be a catalyst to a number of things, but it's seen as part of a broader campaign to really drive prospects into and through the pipeline. Yeah, it's, it's interesting what you said, too, about you know someone who is, let's say, a VP level or C level being willing to actually then pick up the phone and speak with a, an SDR or BDR after an event because you provided value at that event, whereas if it, they had come out kind of cold, that wouldn't be, they wouldn't be willing to do that. Um, and we see that a lot. I think John Miller with Engageo talks about kind of those engagement minutes. So before people give you money, time is their currency. So, you know, if someone is willing to spend time with you in a room, whether Mm -hmm. it be at a dinner or they come and, you know, they are talking to you for a while and and finding out more about your product at a a trade show booth, any sort of way that they are spending time with you, that is such a good indicator of they're probably going to be willing to engage more because they've uh, already made that investment. I completely agree. I think sometimes we get so focused on the buying journey and the stages of discovering and learning, we forget that sometimes there's a stage zero that we call attention. If you can get a prospect's attention, if you can keep their attention, if you can earn ongoing attention, whether they're ready to buy this week, this month, or two years from now, you've got the currency of a great foundation to build uh, some some, some mutually uh, beneficial relationship. we got to take a quick break, pay some bills. We'll be right back with Sales Pipeline Radio. we got a lot more with Alexander Gibson, the CMO of Event Farm. We're going to be talking about the rise of event marketing technology, how you can leverage that to get more ROI out of your events, combining online and offline behavior in a true integrated campaign format. Lots more to go. We'll be right back. This Ben, Sales Pipeline Radio. In a world where the speed of innovation and change in B2B marketing has never been greater, the only thing bigger is the need for clarity or a blueprint for a guide to what's really working and how to apply it specifically to increase sales pipeline growth, velocity, and conversion. That's what you'll find in the Modern Marketer's Field Guide. Download it free at HeinzMarketing.com. Building a sales development competency is critical to lasting revenue growth. Learn how to grow your business and register for the Modern Marketer's Workshop, Sales Development, the Essential Building Blocks for Revenue Growth, a fully online interactive workshop on June 6th and 7th from 11 a.m. to 1230 p.m. Pacific. You'll learn how to build a scalable, united sales and marketing engine to lead your organization toward your revenue objectives. Visit www.heinzmarketing.com slash workshops. That's H-E-I-N-Z marketing dot com and register today. And while you're doing that, tune back in to Matt and his guest. Uh, nothing like multitasking the sales and marketing world. Thanks very much for joining us back here at Sales Pipeline Radio. We've got Alexandra Gibson, the CMO at Event Parm. If you'd like to follow Alexandra, you can find her on Twitter at Gibson DM. That's Gibson DM. I also encourage you to check out eventfarm.com. They've got a lot of great content up there related to event marketing, uh, a lot of great stuff there. You can, you can particularly find there's, they have, they've just published something called the complete guide to revenue event marketing and, uh, really, really like what they've done there providing a lot of great insights make sure you join us every week uh thursday at 11 30 pacific 2 30 eastern we will be featuring some great guests over the next few weeks on sales pipeline radio next week we've got jeb blount uh who is one of the preeminent sales experts in the industry he's uh, just published a new book called fanatical prospecting fantastic resource for sales and marketing folks alike following that we've got sangram vire he is the cmo of uh terminus and we're gonna be talking about abm is it a fad is it here to stay 
is it just a hashtag or is this really something you should be focused on long term in your business? So we talked about that. And then finally, to round out our last episode of May 2017, Paul Tashima, who's one of the co-founders of a company called Nudge. We can talk about the power of relationship marketing in a distracted world and what you can do there to be more successful. But I want to get back for the last few minutes here at Sales Pipeline Radio, continue our conversation with Alexandra Gibson, the CMO of Event Farm. And Alexandra, you know, the, we've talked a little bit about events and the importance of events. Let's talk about sort of the rise of event marketing technology. There's a handful of companies that are now involved in this. I think, you know, you see companies like the Marketos and Eloqua start to sort of put a nod towards offline behavior in some of their features. Uh, but, you know, for companies that are investing more in events and want to particularly tie the dots uh, between online and offline behavior and really understand which events are working, uh, I think that's where tools like Event Farm really come into place. Talk a little about that rise and not only as the CMO of Event Farm, but just as a CMO yourself, having been in a number of companies really with a focus on driving revenue performance. Why is this so important? I think uh, it really just boils down to the the share of wallet that events have in most marketing budgets that it only you can only give that answer for so long. Well, you know, this is important. We've always done this. You know, we all know events are important. At a certain point, your CFO, CEO, your board is going to say, yeah, but why this event um, or why these events? And, you know, a lot of people have just kind of used them as cost centers or looked at them as cost centers. Marketers are trying to be heard. Um, and it used to be you could publish a great ebook and you could get thousands and thousands of downloads. And, and as we know, kind of the online content is becoming so much more saturated. So how do you stand out? I mean, I was listening to Joe Chernov's recording when was interviewed by you a while ago, and he was talking about even direct mail. I mean, would that be something that you would think uh, would come from kind of a, a digital guy's mouth? But, you know, in order to be heard, kind of that event piece is something that stands out, shows that you are invested and in providing value uh, to the person that um, you are inviting to this. And it's part of kind of, you know, overarching strategy. Do marketers think that events are beneath them? And I ask this question just based on what I'm seeing in the digital space, and you've got this big data creating all this complexity on lead scoring and everything else. And then you've got the old school, let's do a trade show, let's have a booth, let's buy someone a steak dinner. I mean, I, I honestly think in the, in, the, in the resurgence of events as a channel that seems to be working, I get the sense, and I don't see, I don't hear many marketers like, put, like say these words, but I get the sense that they'd rather work on more, what they consider more sophisticated marketing. They see events as kind of old school and, and not as valuable. Do you see that have you heard that? And, and I can think of a hundred ways to sort of refute that message, but like, you know, what's yeah. your thought on that? You know, that's pretty interesting because I think it's true. I think digital and, and a lot of those things are very data centric. And so that becomes, that has a certain cachet with it. And you feel like I am a more sophisticated marketer, marketer because I can slice and dice and do all of these things, look at influence and attribution, whereas events kind of feels like, oh, am I a party planner? It's unfortunate because we're seeing, you know, events as part of an omni-channel strategy are so important. But, you know, I do think that there is still that stigma and most of it is tied to the fact that it probably feels like it's just the party throwing or event throwing part and not, you know, you're a planner and not a full event marketer. So I think once we move to that place where it is event marketing as part of a larger strategy, um, kind of like if you were doing the paid digital strategy, we'll start seeing a rise again where that becomes a place that's at kind of the big kids table. But until then, you know, it, it is a little bit of, of the black sheep of, of the family. Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate because I think you know, I think a lot of people, you're right, people think of events as just sort of brute force, unattributed marketing. And certainly a lot of people still think of it that way, right? You know, you do a trade show booth and you may get some scans, but otherwise you really don't know what you got out of it. Or you do an event, you've got 10 seats at a table, and at the last minute you're like, well, just invite whoever you want so we use up the seats. Well, that's not really a good use of time either. But, you know, I think so many marketers just get in the habit of measuring more, more traffic, more leads, more of everything, and assuming that more is better. You know, if you can get 15 of the most important decision makers at your target accounts into a room, whether it's for, you know, a fireside chat with someone important or what maybe it is for a steak dinner or, you know, whatever it is, if you can engage those 15 people at the beginning of a conversation, maybe it is just stage zero getting their attention for the next part of the conversation. Like what's marketing's job? Is it really more 
or is it the right prospects into the pipeline? If it's really pipeline contribution and getting the right people in the right place, you know, I mean, maybe that that speaks to a redeployment of efforts across channels that really drive that more efficiently. And I think you can make a strong argument that the right events done well do a great job of doing that. Yeah, it's so true. And I think that this is something that isn't just, you know, an event marketing piece. It's a marketing. Is it important that we get more leads, more MQLs? Or is it important, you know, that we go more an account based and you get the right people and you're, you're touching the right people in the organization? Like, I wish I could answer that question and we're definitely toiling with it. And I think we are on the right path from a strategy perspective at Event Farm, but it is still being in a demand gen driven world for a long time. It feels to a marketer a little bit you feel like, have I done my job if this event, even if it was the eight CMOs of, you know, some of your target accounts that came to your event, does that feel as, as good as, oh, 300 new leads? That's something as marketers that we're going to have to, I guess, all have therapy for and, and start dealing with. It's a really hard question to answer because even though I know the answer is I would rather have the smaller number of qualified people in the pipeline, the bigger numbers always sound better. It makes you seem like you've been working harder. If you do all this work and you engage eight people, like, okay, right? But if those are, if, if you're doing named account selling and those are the eight most important accounts and those ultimately lead to deals, like, wasn't that worthwhile doing? So I want to ask you related to that. Let's, let's talk about KPIs because I mean, this gets even more complicated in complex selling. You know, if you're not doing one call closes, if you're not doing short time, you know, short account selling, you do an event, even if you, let's say you do a trade show, you got a part of it is having a booth and doing scans. What comes immediately out of that trade show on your flight home, as you try to evaluate, was it a good event? You're probably not looking at pipeline, let alone close deals. So how do you think about KPIs and measures of success, you know, short term and long term from events? That's definitely something that, you know, we talk about kind of indicators and KP, you know, KPIs of before, during, and after your event. And you're right that after the event, you can't say, oh, why didn't we close any deals? Most of us don't have those kind of products or services that someone finds on the dotted line right at your event. So you do need to look at some of the early signs that things were going in the right direction. So, you know, as much as I just said, well, do new leads matter? Well, in some cases, maybe the point of that was having was a lead generation type event and you were, you knew you were going to be uh, amongst the right people. As far as the people that were there, the quality of the registrants based on your target persona, you can also look at, I think, one area that a lot of people forget about are your current customers. So what is the importance of having that FaceTime and whining and dining them, having them have a great experience when it comes to their loyalty for them to refer you and also when it comes to renewal and and retention time. As far as kind of later, you want to keep looking at opportunities created. So I mentioned for for that roadshow that we did back in October, if we had looked at November 1st, once the six cities were finished, I don't think we would have felt like it was a huge pipeline driver. But all of a sudden, when we looked at November 15th or December 1st, you know, kind of based on where your, um, what your sales cycle is, you have to constantly kind of be checking on that campaign because it's a, it's a long, a long process. Um, but, you know, you can also look at if you're using events in a way that, okay, we're just going to invite people that are already in opportunity stage, then you want to see how do I compare that to people who didn't attend this event? How do I compare the velocity of how quickly that deal closed compared to people who weren't, weren't touched with that particular channel? Great stuff. Well, I really appreciate everything you shared with us today, Alexandra, from from Dave Matthews and Big Head Todd to leading the way Absolutely. with event marketing, event marketing technology, at CMO Event Farm. Really, thank you very much for joining us today. Definitely learn more about Event Farm at eventfarm.com. Definitely encourage you to check out their complete guide to revenue event marketing. And if you want to learn more about Alexandra and follow her, she's at Twitter at Gibson DM. If you like this episode, you want to listen to this again, share this with those on your team, definitely check out the replay on the podcast available at iTunes Store and Google Play. You'll find it up next or early next week on Sales Pipeline Radio and a transcript of today's event also on our website uh, on the blog at HeinzMarketing.com. We will link to the complete guide to revenue event marketing from our call from the uh, podcast notes as well as from the website. Make sure you come back and join us every Thursday, 1130 Pacific, 230 Eastern. We've got some great guests coming up. Jeb Blount from Fanatical Prospect is next. Then we've got ABM, Relationship Marketing, Conversational Sales Presentations, lots of great, great sales and marketing content 
segment coming up. On behalf of our amazing producer, Paul, this is Matt Hines. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll see you next time on Sales Pipeline Radio. Once again, you've been listening to Sales Pipeline Radio, brought to you by the folks at Matt Hines Marketing, right here on the Funnel Radio Channel for at-work listeners like you. 